Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Chen Zhang from Nanyang Technological University Continental NTU Corporate Lab. Uh, well, today I'm going to present you our work, Automata Guided Control Flow Sensitive Fast Driver Generation. Well, this is a joint work from Continental NTU Corporate Lab, the Hong Kong Polytechnic University, the Xidian University, and the Singapore Management University. Uh, well, first let me briefly introduce the process and the characteristics of fuzzing. Well, the left part of the slide shows the uh, basic process of fuzzing. Uh, fuzzers repeatedly feed the randomly mutated input into the target program and monitors its execution and collect coverage feedback, try to uh, improve its testing performance. We could notice that uh, throughout the testing process, uh, the fuzzing has a strong requirement that the target is executable. So this is not always be satisfied in the real world testing scenarios. Particularly, there are much code bases are provided uh, as uh, library APIs. So in this case, fast drivers has to be composed for effectively testing the libraries. So besides the quality, okay, the correctness and the robustness of the fast driver uh, significantly matters for the testing quality. Uh, well, in industrial, there are practical needs for generating fast drivers. Uh, for example, Google has built and uh, maintained a project called OSS Fast, uh, providing a global fast driver generation, uh, fast driver framework for fuzzing the infra infrastructures of the modern code bases, such as some libraries providing the fundamental functionalities. So, uh, as we can see, in the past seven years, there are more than hundreds of the contributors they are trying to create and maintain the fast drivers for hundreds of projects. And in total, till now, they have found around at least tens of thousands of the bugs uh, based on these drivers. And I had to mention that the, those drivers are mainly written by human experts, uh, such as the security auditors or the developers, which is a quite labor-intensive and time-consuming work. So this strongly motivates the development of automatic fast driver generation techniques. Uh, well, let us uh, zoom in into an example fast driver of the library APIs. So as shown in the slide, there is an API function called a parse PDF. Well, uh, a typical fast driver of this kind of API can be the following. It first parses the input.pdf and uh, then it got a parsed PDF object. Using this object, it can iterate all the pages inside the PDF and renders each page for trying to reach more testing of the program behaviors. Uh, so there are some existing research works targeting uh, automatically generating fast drivers, uh, such as uh, FastGen, uh, Fudge, APCraft, Winnie, Intelligent, etc. Well, uh, given an API which needs a fast driver, uh, their methods mostly follow a, a paradigm uh, which has a learn and synthesize workflow. This means that the API usage contained inside the example programs, they will first be learned, uh, such as learned from their static or dynamic analysis results, and then the learned usage are used to synthesize the fast drivers. Well, upon this uh, paradigm, we have a key observation that existing solutions failed to properly model the control flow dependency of the API usage. Uh, specifically, existing usage models include the API sequence graph, some data dependency tree, and some object life cycle thing, et cetera. However, none of them can properly describe some like the common control flow structures like the conditional branches and loops. Well, this, this, however, these structures are critical components for the API usage. For example, if we want to call an API, perhaps you can only call it under certain conditions, or you need to check the return status of some API to determine whether you need to continue the execution of the following APIs or not. Uh, or perhaps you just want to iterate in the, the parsed object to, uh, to get more, to testing more program behaviors. So without them, the effectiveness of the drivers can be compromised. Uh, so based on this observation, we decide to use a more descriptive usage model. We picked the automata. 
Uh, so we first discuss how the automata can be used to represent the API usage. We starting from the API sequences and the conditional branches. So as shown in the in the <coughs> in the top left side of the slide, uh, there is an example code shown for PDF related APIs. Uh, it first part uh, it first create an object called PDF using the input argument input.pdf, and if the PDF parses successfully, it will call the extract text to extract all the text inside the PDF. And uh, finally, anyway, it will close the PDF to clean all the objects it created. So uh, to turn that example into automata, uh, the key here is to properly define the meaning of the events inside the automata. Uh, so we have two kinds of the events, aka the API function events and the conditional events. For the function events, uh, one function events uh, represents two actions. First, it needs to, uh, it means that the, the corresponding API it represents for has been executed. And second, if that API has a return value, it will be assigned to the bounded API variable. For example, for the event B, uh, it means that the PDF.parse has been executed and its return value has been assigned to the red underscore B. Uh, well, for the condition events, uh, it mainly the, the, uh, means that the satisfaction of certain uh, uh, Boolean expression composed by the return variables. So, uh, for example, the Y and N are pairs of the, uh, of the condition events for the red B. Uh, so, upon, based on these defined events, we can finally uh, represent the, the, the API usage using our automata. Uh, we can see that uh, for this automata, it has two passes. First is A, B, N, D. And this means that uh, because this is N, so this means that the PDF has passed the field, so it just uh, called the D, called the PDF close to, to close the PDF directly. So for the another pass, it is A, B, Y, y C, D. So this means that uh, it will, it passes successfully and it will extract all the text of the PDF. Okay, so, uh, so we now we go into detail how the loops can be represented using automata. So describing um, loop structure is a little more complex than the conditional branches, since uh, correctly describing the loop requires the proper description of three key components of the loop. Uh, we know that uh, one loop has the initializer, has the increment, incrementer, and the stop condition, right? So uh, we need to describe them all if they have. So uh, we, we divided the loop into the following three cases and uh, we are going to show the cases from one to three from the specific case to the general case from the simple case to the complex case. So let's, let's look, have a look at the loop case one. Um, it, uh, this is a simple case since uh, this kind of loop can be directly represented using the previous, discuss, previous defined the events. So we can see the final automaton. Uh, it first, uh, uh, once the event A happens, it means uh, it checks whether the PDF has the next page. And if it has, means the event T, it will, uh, next it will call the PDF get next. It will continue loop the ATB part, and uh, it will end the loop once the event F happens, which means that PDF has no next page. Um, so this is the, basically the case one. For the case two, uh, it is mostly the uh, same as the first one. However, there is one key difference is that the, the incrementer and the stop condition, which means the get next and has next, are not API functions. So in this case, uh, if we reuse the, the, the predefined, uh, previously defined the events, we cannot describe the kind of loop because they are not API events. Uh, so in, in, to, to handle this kind of situation, uh, our strategy is that we model, our model introduces mock API events. Um, which means we introduce the mock i and mock j events to additionally wrap this kind of logic inside our, our event flow. So uh, our criteria for here to determine whether it should be mocked as an API event is, <coughs> for this case is that, um, is that uh, it, it, for this case is that uh, it should be, uh, uh, follows some 
um, common iterator interfaces. Uh, like for example, for this case, uh, the IT variable uh, we checked, it, we know that it is a return variable of an API function called the page iterator, and uh, we checked its member function by checking its member function's name. Uh, so for the last case, uh, in this case, this is a general case where all the three key components are involved to, to be described, and they, they are involved with a specific loop, loop variable called the lowercase i. So in this case, uh, we also handle it by introducing more mock API event, function events to properly record the data flow propagation of the loop variable i. So uh, this is basically finished by uh, introducing uh, using some pro using proper static analysis to identify the the uh, the loop variable inside the inside the loop, and uh, this variable can be first identified. Then its related data flow propagation relation can be recognized and wrapped as events. Uh, well, till now we have established the automata-based modeling of the control flow structures. Upon this modeling, our work established an automata-guided framework for the learn and synthesize process. Well, there are three key components in our tactical design. First, we designed a static analysis-based extraction algorithm, which extracts the auto usage automata from the example programs um, using the static analysis. Well, note that these uh, extracted automata are raw automata, which means that they can contain incorrect uh, usage and they can contain duplicate uh, usages. Therefore, we introduced a distillation component to denoise and deduplicate them, and finally merged the distilled ones into one unified automata. This is based on some automata active learning uh, algorithm. And finally, uh, to use that unified usage automaton, uh, we, we propose some, some utilization component to more effectively use the learned automata to guide the fuzzy. So we developed our prototype named Rubik for Java libraries and did a series of uh, evaluations on its effectiveness. To generate the drivers for open source, uh, for popular libraries such as Apache libraries, uh, we crowded the example from open, open source repositories like the GitHub, GitLab, etc., and applied Rubik on them for the fast driver generation. Well, we also evaluated its generation time costs and compared with uh, SOTAs, and we did a ablation study for each key technical design, and we also conducted false positive analysis on these results. Uh, it shows that uh, Rubik outperforms the existing solutions and has the lowest uh, FP rate. Well, finally, uh, we apply Rubik on new bugs hunting. Uh, the bugs it found has successfully exploited multiple popular Android apps. And you can find more detail about uh, uh, the, 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 the tool and about the work from its website and the GitHub repo. Uh, so this is all the, for the presentation, and thank you for your attention.